All right, I hope you enjoyed watching G's instructional video as much as I did. Um, so I'm going to have three hints for 11.4, uh, numbers 8, 9, and 10. So number 8, um, the function is like really long. It starts getting big. So um, we want to do the same thing we've been doing. Uh, and when we plug it into the formula of the definition of the derivative, like this top part specifically is like long. So I would suggest maybe we could split it up a little bit. So let's find f of x plus h. We'll simplify it all out. Then we'll just write f of x. And then we'll put a subtract sign and do over h and put the limit. So this part right here might be a part we can do separate. So f of x plus h. Here's regular f of x. Every time there's an x, instead of having x, we're going to replace it with x plus h. So 8 times x plus h squared plus x plus h minus 5. So it's long. It's about to get even longer. So we're going to square this piece. x plus h times itself. And I'm going to kind of write out each step in case, um, like, you don't want to skip any algebra steps. So I'm going to foil these two together and then keep the 8 out front. That's one way to do it. You can kind of multiply things together in any order. Um, so first x squared plus xh plus another hx. But hx and xh are the same because 2 times 3 is the same thing as 3 times 2. Like um, we could call these both xh's if we want. And then we can kind of see, oh, they're the same. We can combine like terms later. And then last, h times h. And then um, I think I'm just going to copy down x plus h and minus 5 because nothing really happens to those. So let's combine these to be 2xh. And then let's go ahead and distribute this 8. So we have 8 times x squared and 8 times 2xh and 8 times h squared, and then the rest. So, yeah, long. Um, let's combine anything that might combine. And I don't think anything really does. Um, we have x squareds, but no other x squareds. x h's, but no other x h's. h squareds, regular x's, regular h's, and a number. So this big, long thing is f of x plus h right there but in our formula we have a little bit more to it so we just did this one whoops that was my cheat sheet um and we want to put the limit on there and minus f of x and all over h so let's do that so i'm gonna sneak it on back here maybe even change colors the limit as h approaches 0 is f of x plus h, which is really long, minus f of x, which was the original 8x squared plus x minus 5, all over h. Okay, that was nice to not have to write all this red stuff every single time. We could just deal with the blue stuff. Um, but now let's distribute this negative to each of those things. And so then we'll have the limit as h goes to 0 of, so I'll get rid of the parentheses, 8x squared plus 16xh plus 8h squared plus x plus h minus 5. So minus 8x squared and minus positive x and minus negative 5. So minusing a negative is like I ain't not going to the store. If you ain't not going to the store, you're going to the store. So it's a positive 5. It's a plus 5 all over h. Okay, now that everything's like together, we can start canceling. So 8x squared minus 8x squared. P.S. All of this last stuff had better cancel with stuff in the front. Otherwise, you're missing something. So like that'll happen every single time. The minus x cancels with the plus x. And the plus 5 cancels with the minus 5. So all of this minus f of x part should go away. And the stuff that's left over better have an h in common. Because in a sec, we're going to factor it out. And then it'll cancel. And then we're good. I'm going to make some space on here. Okay. 
Okie dokie. So, what we have left... Sorry. I think uh, we have some mail. Okay, I'm back. Guard dog settled down. Okay, so what we have left is this, after all that stuff canceled. Um, the top all has an H in common, so we could factor out an H from it. And then they cancel. And then the last thing is we can finally apply that limit because we're not going to divide by zero anymore. So that's great. So 16x plus 8, h is now zero. So we're plugging in, we're using the 90% rule. Um, so 8 times zero plus 1. So this becomes 16x plus zero plus 1. So now we finally have um, the slope of the tangent line and we want to do it when x is zero and so now x is going to be zero just because that's the point that they told me maybe they told you a little bit of a different point so now we have 16 times zero plus one which is just one Whew! so that was part a <laughs> part b is find the equation of the slope of the tangent line and that's where we do point slope form i'll be right back okay so point slope form of a line we just found that the slope of the tangent line at that point is 1. Um, and now we want the equation of the slope of the tangent line. And so um, we know that the slope is 1. That's the m. And so that helped us find this. The rest of it is pretty straightforward. So this x1 and y1 are an x and a y of some ordered pair that go together. And so this is our point that we know what it is so these are our x1 and y1 this x and y stay letters they're like the variables they're going to be part of the equation so our x1 is 0 and our y1 is negative 5 and um y minus y1 here's another ain't not going to the store thing so that's y plus 5 then we'll copy down some more and then we have x minus 0, so that's just like x, I guess. And then we can just switch this form a little bit. So let's minus 5 from both sides. So here is the equation of the slope of the tangent line. Or equation of the tangent line at 0, comma, negative 5 with an optional 1. So there's our um, second piece. Okay, so number 9. Um, we're going to use some of the strategies. So it's a root in here, and when we have a root minus another root, um, we're going to try to multiply by the conjugate. And so this one gets a little bit hairy, and I wanted to go over it. So um, let's plug it on in. So f of x plus h. Here's regular f of x. Every time it says x, we're going to make an x plus h. So let's see. We'll have a limit. And then um, f of x plus h is 4 root 2, but x plus h is in there instead of just x. And then we have minus f of x, which is just the thing, all over h. So root minus a root. Let's multiply by the conjugate of the numerator. So instead of 4 root 2 x plus h minus 4 root 2 x, we're going to do 4 root 2x plus h plus 4 root 2x. And whatever you do to the top, you have to also do to the bottom. And you might want to distribute that too and have it be 2x plus 2h. That's lovely, your choice. Okay, so now we're going to foil uh, big time, the top. So first, this one times this one. And then outer and then inner, and then last. So we'll take it nice and slow. So let's multiply the things that are on the outside of the root, the 4 times the 4. So we'll get 16. And then things on the inside of the root. And so root something times root the same thing. That's kind of like saying um, root 5. I'm going to have like a little thought bubble here. Ready? root 5 times root 5. There's a couple ways to do it. You can multiply the 5 times the 5, keep it on the inside, it's 25, and then simplify it. And you're like, oh, 25 
That simplifies down to 5 times 5. There's a pair of things. They can come out of the root, and it ends up just being 5 on the outside of the root with no, no root left over. Or you can skip all this middle junk and be like root of something times the square root of that same thing, two of them, and it's square root. So the roots are just going to cancel and we'll just have that one thing of five. So let's take that idea because it's going to be quicker and apply it here. Oh, we're a little frozen. Sage. Okay, so that was first. Now we're going to go to outer. So four times four is still 16. It's positive. And then these things are not the same. So we can't do that shortcut. So underneath the root, there's a 2, um, and <laughs> I don't know, you could write it any way you want, times 2x, that's fine, that's a good way to write it. Okay, now inner, um, I'm going to write it down below because I'm running out of room, plus I have a secret. Okay, so negative 4 times 4 is negative 16, and the inners are not the same, so we're going to have to have like a big old root, and so we have 2x times... 2 times x plus h. And then last. So negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. And oh, now they're the same again. So root 2x times root 2x. We can just write 2x. Okay, so here is the top. Whoa. Now for the bottom. Um, they'll have like an h times all that stuff. Um, I don't know if we want to distribute that or not. For now, I think I'm just going to leave it. Okay, so here is my secret. Um, this middle term and that middle term are exactly the same, but they have an opposite sign. So thank goodness, something simplifies. Okay, I'm going to do some rewriting, and I'll meet you back up at the top. Okay, we're still on 9. So, um... The middle term's canceled, and here's what we have left. So maybe let's continue simplifying the top. Remember, we're trying to get to the point where we can plug in h is 0. But if we do that right now, 0 times stuff, the whole bottom is 0, and we're not allowed to divide by 0. So let's do this. So 16 times 2 is 32. Maybe we could distribute the 32 times the x and the h. So 32x plus 32h, and then 16 times 2 is 32x. Oh, nice. We have a little bit of simplification on the top. That's lovely. And so on the top, we'll just have 32h. And on the bottom, we still have all of this stuff. I'm just going to go like that because we can see it up above there. And guess what? The h's will cancel. So finally, we're allowed to like actually um, plug in something because now the bottom isn't 0 anymore. And so um, let me actually rewrite these. Now, the only h we have left over is here. That's going to go towards 0. And so we get to plug it in now and see if it creates anything illegal. And it doesn't anymore. So finally, we'll have 32 on the top. And then 4 root 2 times just x, because the h is gone. And then we have another 4 root 2x. And that's good, but maybe we can simplify it a little bit more. 4 of something plus another 4 of something is 8 of that same thing. And then maybe 32 over 8 will simplify a little bit. I think 8 goes into both of those. And so then we just have 4, um, and then, ooh, 8 goes into it. Okay, so 4 over root 2x. So there is our final... Um, slope of the tangent line thing. Then you'll have to do it at the point, and then you find the equation of the line at that point. Okay, you finish it up. Okay, I wanted to start number 10 as the last one. So um, after you plug in the fraction, whatever it is, to so the f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, with the limit in front formula, you get something like this. And you have to get a common denominator um, on these two to like squish them together. So let's just talk about that. So x plus h and x actually don't have anything in common in a times or divide kind of a sense. So they need to multiply by each other. And so this one has an x. It needs the x plus h. And whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. 